Thank you, Dove. Mahalo. And aloha, everybody. Um, I was just going to, I didn't catch the name. I think you said Joe Schmidt, um, then Dove, but I, I came kind of near the end there, but um, it was Joe Schmidt. Um, yeah, I think we're friends on Facebook. And, um, yeah, 8.30 in the morning, <laughs> I was calculating that as you as you said the time. Yeah, it's two th- if that's Eastern time, yes, it's 2.30 in the morning here in Hawaii time. So, um, but I was enjoying listening to um, Joe there. And, um, yeah, along my journey, it keeps coming back to here and now, here and now. And we're right where we're meant to be, right where we're meant to be. And are we making the choice? The choice, the choice, the choice. <laughs> That's uh, continually coming up on my journey these days is that we're, um, it's, it's always coming back to a choice. Are we making the choice? Here is a new moment. Right where we're meant to be and are we making the choice? We've been given that opportunity again and again and again. Every chance encounter, making the choice, the ego or love. The body or God. The body of the ego or the body of God. The seeming body of the ego. And, um, you know, it's so interesting on our journey that everything comes up right, you know, at the perfect timing. (laughs) Uh, Recently, there's been a lot coming up for me in um, looking beyond the body. And um, there's so much I'm hearing recently. Other teachers on ACIM gather, speak about it. And, um, you know, it's just everything is so perfectly unfolding. And the answers are always flowing. And I hear Holy Spirit just coming through in so many different um, avenues, well, seemingly different avenues. (laughs) Holy Spirit's voice. You know, and that's um, so funny. It reminds me of today's lesson. I'm at Lesson 171. Um... You know, we repeat, God is but love and therefore so am I. Sitting with that, realizing that, you know, we're, we're freeing the world as we say that. Because we're freeing ourselves and we are the world. We are everything. And we're freeing ourselves. And then um, all things are echoes of the voice of God. And sitting with that this morning and and hearing sounds of the traffic outside and sitting with that and with the, 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 the movement of the traffic and as I sat with that what came to me was if I see it as the noise of the car then where am I coming from that was the question that came to my mind and I realized in that moment that um, as I was giving meaning to the sound <laughs> You know, it's so funny on this journey, we, you know, we look around us and, and, and we choose to look through the eyes of love. We pass, we, we, we pass over the eyes of the ego. We no longer choose to look through the eyes of the ego. We choose to look through the eyes of love. And what are we listening with? <laughs> it's funny because the meaning, uh, if, if, if I see the noise coming from the car alone, and oh, it's the car that makes that noise, then of course I'm making, I'm enforcing my belief in separation and seeing that there's something outside of me that is making that noise and that is um, forming that noise. Whereas there is no car <laughs> forming any noise, but it is the echo of the voice of God. All are echoes of the voice of God. It's all a calling. It's all a calling and it's all a um, the song, the song of heaven. And as we sit with that, we realize that, that you know, we really are being asked to drop all meaning. <laughs> you know, I, I look at my journey and I see um, the sacred cows along the way. I see how I, I would at times give up certain things along my journey because the ego mind sees so many things, you know, so many separated things. Okay, we can hand over this, we can hand over that. And as I see it today, I see that, you know, it, it's it's all or nothing. To truly look through the eyes of love and to be in that ongoing um, place 
and and to stay there and to um, maintain uh, the awareness, the focus. I see that today that it's 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 looking at love, and that's really all we're being asked to do in a course of miracles. In that choose again, let's turn around and face love. Just look at love. Look at love. Focus on love. Even if we don't know what love is, capital L, the love of God. Even if we're not there, we don't. You know, we haven't had many realizations to do with love. It really doesn't matter. I see that on the journey today, and that's how this is also perfectly unfolding. And we're right where we're meant to be because all we're really being asked, we're not being asked to do anything. We're just being asked to turn around, just that one simple thing, and be willing to look at love. And even be willing to question love. It doesn't matter. We can pose as many questions as we wish. We can question love in any, in any way we choose. Because those questions are an opening. Opening of a, of a, a vortex that is, um, is, is continuing the flow. Where, where As we're asking, we are able to listen. If we're asking, then we know in our hearts there's faith there. There's faith that the answers are going to flow when we're asking. And what I see in A Course in Miracles is that really all we're being asked is just to face the light. To look at the light. You know, and as we look at the light, what comes up next? What surfaces is, you know, well, what's the light got to say for itself? <laughs> we look to the light and we begin to communicate with the light and we talk to the light and we listen to the light and we follow the light. But to do all of this, we must face the light. We must face the light. And, and this is where I see on my journey that this is where the awareness grows. And, and this is where choose again is so important. Choose again, choose again, choose again. Because we're so used to looking through the eyes of the ego. We're so used to this identity we've believed ourselves to be that our lack of awareness of, of love. It, we're, we're, we're so, and, and that's interesting because the lack of awareness... When awareness is lacking, we're lacking. We are lacking love. And really looking at the illusion, at the dream, at the identity of this, um, this false identity we believe ourselves to be, it's all born out of lack. And what is it lacking? It's just lacking love. And if we look at everything, when we're, when we're caught up in the identity with the ego, it's always stemming from a place of lack. And all that lack is is that love is missing. We're lacking love. But in that place of lack, the ego self sees that there is something lacking. The ego self knows that it's always looking for something, searching for something, seeking but do not find. The ego's motto, seek but do not find. So the ego is always searching and there's always that feeling of lack, of something missing. And the only way that we will ever, ever break through that, because it, it is a seeming barrier to the ego, because the ego only sees walls, and where, the, and the, where there are walls of separation, there's lack exists, because love is being blocked out. Every wall of separation, every seeming wall of separation is blocking out love. If we see there's a beginning and an ending to the leaf, the beginning and the ending to the leaf is blocking out love. When we see that, if we see there's a beginning and an ending to a car, a house, the clouds, the sea, if we see there's a beginning and an ending, that beginning and an ending signifies that the um, blocking out of love at those barriers, at the beginning and at the ending, there's a blockage, there's something being blocked, and we're blocking out love, we're blocking out our truth. And the only way to look beyond the beginning and the ending that the ego eyes see <laughs> is to look with new eyes, is to look differently, because the ego's eyes will always see a beginning and an ending. If we look 
through the eyes that we've looked through for a lifetime, if we continue to look through those eyes and we try and do a course of miracles or any non-dual path, we will come up with blockages because looking through the eyes of the ego um, is a blockage in itself because all it sees is beginning and ending. It sees walls of separation. It sees walls that um, start here and end here on, on, on zillion, zillions of different objects and things and bodies. The ego I sees walls of separation, even though looking through those ego eyes we, we don't see we don't realize that it's walls of separation we just see that there's a house and there's a sea and there's a grass there's a road there's a car there's a body over there there's another body over there so it doesn't it, we're so used to we're so caught up in this false world so caught up in believing ourselves to be separate that the separation is nothing to the ego mind. It's 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 just it is it to the ego mind. It's just the way the world is. But when we begin to uh, choose to look again, we begin to choose differently. We begin to choose love, and allow love to show us. We step back. We look through the eyes of love, and we begin. As we begin to see that we have been mistaken. That there, that, that, that there was no beginning and ending to anything, that there was no separation, as we begin to see that, we realize that these are the eyes, <laughs> that this is where our peace lies. We realize that the suffering lies in separation, in the belief in this seeming separated world lies our suffering where there is beginning and ending <laughs> where there is beginning and ending there will be suffering because love is blocked out where there's a beginning love is blocked where there's an ending love is blocked the beginning and the ending is the idea that uh, that there is um, walls the walls of the separation the beginning and the ending so love is blocked and in that moment uh, it becomes very clear that we cannot choose both we cannot choose to look at the world and make it real this seeming world and make it real and choose love and look through the eyes of love I've tried it <laughs> it doesn't work <laughs> along my journey you know and that just seems to be how this journey unfolds you know we pick up a, a spiritual a non-dual path like A Course in Miracles or something like that and we pick that up and we begin to walk on this journey and um, the ego, our, our ego self, which is who we've known for a lifetime, we think this is who we are, we don't really question it so much. And so the ego self is like so happy, puts up its hands and says, I can show you the way here, I can show you, you know, like I've got to figure it out. Yep, I've always got to figure it out, I've got all the answers. <laughs> And so our ego self that we've known for a lifetime, that we've believed ourselves to be, is so happy to come along this spiritual journey and to um, help us along. And of course, through those ego eyes, through this ego identity, uh, we will never see beyond the separation. We cannot see beyond the separation. We cannot see beyond the walls. The only way we can see is by choosing the other eyes, choosing our eyes of love, choosing to step back. And in looking through the eyes of love, the ego says, yes, <laughs> I can do that too. <laughs> As I look back at my journey, I see the ego had its hand up for everything, wanting to get had all the answers in the bag, always had all the answers. I had the answers for my awakening, the path of my awakening. And, 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 and it came to the day when I realized that I was in my own way. And when I realized I was in my own way, like what was in my own way? What was in my own way was the identity that I believed myself to be for a lifetime. This identity was um, is who I still saw myself as. And as I listened to that voice, is that 
identity was continuing to like chatter, chatter, chatter and tell me what, which way to go and what to do, I realized that this voice is just something that we are so used to listening to for a lifetime. And we, and, and I realized I was going in and out of listening to the old voice, listening to the voice of love. Sometimes listening to the old voice and I'd catch myself, turn to love. And along the journey I see that, that listening to the old voice has become less and less and less and listening to the voice of love more and more and more. And as the faith has grown more and more, I, I have come to realize just how false the identity is that I believe myself to be and realize that it, 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 it's really funny because it, it, it becomes, um, it, 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 I begin to see it as a joke, it's like an April Fool's joke. It's something that I've um, just been believing in and been listening to this voice. And, and, and you know, the course is so clear because it tells us over and over, Jesus tells us over and over about the two voices, listening, which voice are we going to listen to, which voice. And we don't realize that we think we are that voice that we've listened to for a lifetime. We think that's who we are. As that voice speaks, we listen to it because we think this is who I am. This is coming from me. But it's a seeming identity. It's who we thought we were. <laughs> it's not who we were. But it's who we thought we were. And how we see that is by looking through the eyes of love. I found that on my journey that there was no way to work any of this out. There was no way to have any of these experiences until I looked through the step back and allowed love to reveal the truth to me and allowed love to reveal all truth and then came to realize that I am that that I'm turning to I am the Holy Spirit I am the truth we are we are all the truth and we are that that we turn to and and then how um, beautiful is that when we realize that that <laughs> We are that calling that is waking ourselves up. We are that calling. We are that. That's who we are. We're not this other identity. The identity that we believed ourselves to be is, is in the way. <laughs> it's only in our way because, and we are that. We are our belief in that identity is what gets in our way. Our belief in that identity, so our belief in that voice, our listening to that voice, and we're only doing it, doing it to ourselves. No one else is doing anything to us. No one cast any spell on us. <laughs> we merely turned away from love for a time, for a brief moment, called the tiny mad idea of turning away from love. <laughs> we turned away from love for a moment to see what it was like to turn away from love. And now we're, we're um, searching. Even in this ego state of mind, we can see the innocence in it because we see in the ego state of mind how we were searching and searching and searching our whole life for happiness and for love. And we realize that we've been searching for it, so we've been looking through these ego eyes that we believed ourselves to be searching for something that the ego could never find, <laughs> something that this self, this seeming self could never find because the seeming self, this ego eyes, were looking upon separation, were looking upon beginnings and endings, beginnings and endings, and, and picking up all these pieces with beginnings and endings. The ego self is picking up all these pieces of this seeming world, the puzzles of this world and saying, here it is, maybe it's under here maybe it's in this romantic relationship maybe it's going to be in building this house maybe it's going to be in having this family maybe it's going to be in having in, 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 in having the puppy <laughs> maybe it's going to be here and, and so the ego self is looking and all these but, but in all these bodies animals, whatever, whatever we're looking on, whatever is there, 
where there is no walls, there is no beginning and ending to the body. There is no beginning and ending to the poppy. To whatever we're looking on, there's no beginning and ending. There are no walls there that say that this is a poppy right here. But there is, as we look through the eyes of love, we take that step back and we look through the eyes of love, we we'll begin to realize that what, how our ego eyes are so limited, how they offer such limitation by saying that this piece of love, this piece of um, puppy, <laughs> body, whatever we're looking on, that this, that this identity is, is um, what it is because it's, we're, we're, we're giving it a name, we're giving it meaning. We're offering it meaning. And in offering it meaning, we're limiting it. We're limiting um, the body. We're limiting whatever we're looking on. We're limiting that, saying that this is uh, separate. This is what it is. We offer it meaning. It, it begins here and ends here. It's in this limited space. And what we realize when we stand back and look through the eyes of love that there is no beginning and ending and that what is here is so much more than what we have been seeing it to be. The meaning that the ego's eyes gave it was such limitations in separation and, and was blocking out the loving aspect, the loving, the lovingness of what is there, the true love, and replaced it. The ego replaced it with its own ability for love, which is still so limited, its own ability of happiness, which is still so limited, because it's all seeming and it's all blocking out the truth. So the ego's eyes, we come to find on our journey that the ego's eyes are not the truth. <laughs> the ego's eyes are um, looking falsely, looking on a seeming world and offering meaning and breakdown and the, we see that the ego's eyes are like splintering off everything so, and, and break everything down and further and further until we, have, we get microscopes out. <laughs> and we break it down some more and then some more. And the ego mind will, will continue to break everything down. Everything is splintered off because everything must have a beginning and an ending. The ego mind says everything must have a beginning and an ending. Why? Because, because there is, to the ego mind, that's all there is. There, are, there, are, there is meaning. The ego mind offers everything meaning and then thus walls are formed because this is meaning we offer to this and so now this has this little space over here and everything is confined and cut off and limited. And as we see that, we realize that looking through the ego's eyes um, is really cutting off the gift that we have to give when we look through the eyes of love. When we look through the eyes of love, we see no ending, we see no beginning, we see unlimited love right here, right now. And we see that looking through the eyes of love. And we see that we have been mistaken and really nothing more than that it's so um, simple really which brings me to <laughs> a piece in the text here the simplicity of salvation I had that open this morning so I'm not surprised that it's coming around to this that I'm being drawn to go to this page the simplicity of salvation I'm going to read the first couple of sentences here. This is at the very beginning of chapter 31 in the text. How simple is salvation? All it says is what was never true is not true now and never will be. The impossible has not occurred and can have no effect and that is all. Can this be hard to learn by anyone who wants it to be true? Only unwillingness to learn it 
could make such an easy lesson difficult? How hard is it to see that what is false cannot be true, and what is true cannot be false? You can no longer say that you perceive no differences in false and true. You have been told exactly how to tell one from the other, and just what to do if you become confused. Why then do you persist in learning not such simple things? <laughs> I feel to read on here. Okay, there is a reason, but confuse it not with difficulty in the simple things salvation asks you to learn. It teaches but the very obvious. It merely goes from one apparent lesson to the next, in easy steps which lead you gently from one to another, with no strain at all. This cannot be confusing, yet you are confused. For somehow you believe that what is totally confused is easier to learn and understand. <laughs> what you have taught yourself is such a giant learning feat; it is indeed incredible. But you accomplished it because you wanted to and did not pause in diligence to judge it hard to learn or too complex to grasp. Hmm. Okay, I'm on the next page here. No one who understands what you have learned, how carefully you have learned it, and the pains to which you went to practice and repeat the lessons endlessly in every form you could conceive of them, could ever doubt the power of your learning skill. There is no great power in the world. The world was made by it, and even now depends on nothing else. The lessons you have taught yourself have been so overlearned and fixed; they rise like heavy curtains to obscure the simple and the obvious. Say not you cannot learn them, for your power to learn is strong enough to teach you that your will is not your own. Your thoughts do not belong to you, and even you are someone else. Whoa! I'm going to read that last sentence there again. For your power. For your power to learn is strong enough to teach you that your will is not your own. Your thoughts do not belong to you, and even you are someone else. And we sit with that. And realize that in this moment, are we going to just let it all go? Are we going to open our arms and say, "Okay, if I've been mistaken, show me. If I've been mistaken with who I am, then who am I? Show me." <laughs> and what comes to my mind here is that, you know, it speaks of our willingness of of.、Um, Our, that our will, our will to, with this world, with this dream, is not the truth, and that we turn to God's will. We, so we turn to God's will, and we open up our arms, and we ask for the will of God. What is the will of God? And what I have found so.、Um, Um, so powerful on this journey is all the questioning that can come up. You know, the greatest question: Who am I? But then, what other questions come up? You know, because as we as we question truth, truth, truth is always answering. The answers are always flowing. But as we question truth. We're facing toward the light in that moment. As we're questioning truth, we're facing the light. And what I see along my journey is that there's nothing more important. That that's it. The answer is just face the light, look toward the light, and and stay aware of the light. Practice the awareness. Aware, aware, because awareness is key on this journey. Awareness is key. If we're not aware in this moment, then we're unaware. And in our unawareness, we've got our blindfold back on, and we're looking through the eyes of the ego. 
And so what we're looking for is to become more aware, more aware, more aware. And the only way to become more aware is to continue to turn toward the light, to keep to keep looking to the light, focus on the light, question the light, talk to the light, get to know the light. And soon we realize we are the light that we've been turning to. And soon we realize that we can let go and trust this because the light that we truly are is the God knowledge and is what we've been searching for our entire lifetime. And this God knowledge is our truth. We are that. And when we let go, we fall into our truth. We fall into the arms of love. We fall into the God knowledge that we truly are and from this place all all is provided we fall into abundance the abundance of spirit the abundance of love the abundance of truth and nothing else matters because everything else that we've known in this life that we've made real is all limitation it's all limitation It's all limitation. I'm looking at the board. <laughs> I still Jim. Still Jim wrote up on the board, what am I? And so the most beautiful thing is that when we realize that the only way to ever have that experience and realize who I am I mean, that's the greatest question we can ask. What am I? And, and there's so many questions that we can ask to spirit. And, and we are guaranteed, we, the, knowledge, the, the knowledge is right here, right now. It's right here, right now. The knowledge is here. So we can ask anything and we will know. And the only way that we will ever experience that, what am I? And realize that is by stepping back out of who we thought we were letting that go and looking through the eyes of love and asking God, asking love, asking our truth. We say, what am I? And we get quiet. We get quiet. We get still. And as I was guided a few weeks ago from Holy Spirit to get on the altar, the most, the most um, free freedom the, the most feel, the, the feeling of freedom is um, to get on the altar and to really lay down on the altar our whole self because the ego self will will, will hold some of it you know will want to still be in control I realized that I saw myself uh, taking my body and laying it on the altar and it didn't feel right it just didn't it, something didn't feel right and then I got the message from Holy Spirit it was days later I was still <laughs> And in that moment, I got this message from the Holy Spirit, get on the altar. Get on the altar. All, all, all yourself, get on the altar. And in that moment, in that moment of, of being on the altar, I realized in that moment, there's nothing to do. There's nothing that we can do. If we're fully on the altar, completely given up, handing our whole self over, in that moment, all we have to do is listen we just listen I'm looking back at the board here and Dove has um, got some quotes up here on the board I'm going to read out hi Susan Susan's in the room she's on next always love listening to Susan I look forward to um, your talk today okay so what's Dove Dove's written up on the board here I rest in God and that's what it, it just, um, just to stop there a second, but to be laying on the altar, to be completely lifeless in the eyes of the ego. The eyes of the ego see that it's lifeless. There's nothing to do. There's nothing to grasp. There's nothing to hold on to. There's nothing, there's no thinking. <laughs> no thinking because we lay on the altar and we just wait and we rest. And we rest into love. We rest into God. Um, so Dove put up on the board here, I rest in God, completely undismayed. This thought will carry you through storms and strife, past misery and pain, 
past loss and death and onward to the certainty of God. There is no suffering it cannot heal. There is no problem that it cannot solve. And no appearance but will turn to truth before the eyes of you who rest in God. Wow. That's so beautiful. I remember on my journey, uh, the thought of resting in God and giving everything up, handing everything over, coming with completely open arms. I remember on my journey, the, the ego self saying, but we've got to do something. We've got to say something. We've got to do something. There's got to be stuff to be done. There's always stuff to be done. <laughs> There's always stuff to be accomplished. The ego mind is always grasping, grasping, searching, looking, seeking, and never finding. Because through the eyes of the ego, we will never find what we're looking for, which we know. We all know in our hearts we're looking for love. We're looking for the truth, for happiness. Through the eyes of the ego, we will never find that. Because the eyes of the ego see beginning and ending, limitations. The eyes of the ego block out our awareness to love. Just looking back at the board here, and um, Dove put up on the board. Who would like to join with me in this beautiful lesson that we ask that we rest in God? Let us practice our mind and become quiet and still as we allow ourselves to rest in God. Yeah, let's do that. Let's give 30 seconds here and just stop. And I've put up on the board here. I use it every night as my head hits the pillow. Hmm. Lots of laugh. This is Dove. Lots of laugh. Of course, my pillow says I rest in God. <laughs> Made by www.irestingod.com by Jane Darcy and Joan Williams. That's a good one to check out. Irestingod.com. <laughs> I love that. Hi, Ron. I see Ron is in the room. <laughs> Hello there. Aloha. <laughs> um, I'm looking back at the board here. See who else is in the room here. I saw Still Jim was there. Susan. Uh, hi. Creator's Gift. Aloha. Lovely to meet you. Seven Up. <laughs> Seven Up. Hello. Aloha. Hi, Jim. Aloha, Jim. And hi to Beth. Aloha, Beth. Hi, Hazel. Aloha. Lovely to see everyone here and join coming together. Resting in God. <laughs> Handing over our, our eyes that we've believed in for a lifetime. These eyes that we've looked through, that we've peered through. We believed everything they told us. We realized that We've been mistaken. We come together here and look through the eyes of love and listen to love. Listen to Holy Spirit. Listen to the voice of God. And facing love. Facing love, you know, I know... Uh, in our study group, we've talked a lot about listening to the voice of, of God, listening to the voice of Holy Spirit. And really, uh, 
the further I go on this journey, the further I realize that, that, that you know, what questions this is, just, you know, we're getting in our way as we question it. And all we need to do is just face love and, and, and look out there and, and, and just get to know love. Begin to question love, talk to love, ask love questions. And that great question, who am I? And just really facing love, facing love and looking at love and talking to love, becoming more aware and more aware. And that's this whole journey, is becoming more aware, more aware, more aware. And you wake up like the lotus flower opens. <laughs> we wake up. We wake up. And of and course, you know, we're, we're um, read this. And of course, the miracle Jesus tells us, this is a gentle process of awakening and um, any non-dual path it really doesn't matter I see that today um, it doesn't matter what we're looking on what we're doing but are we listening to spirit are we listening to guidance um, that's the most important thing are we listening are we turning to the truth are we turning to the light are we listening are we asking questions are we following and when we ask questions those answers will come if we're not if, if we're not completely open in that moment to receive, then it, it, it might be the next day. It, it might be the next moment. And it doesn't really matter. But none of that matters. It's where we can just drop all that matters. <laughs> I remember reading up here on the board. I'm not sure who put it on there. Um, it might have been Jim um, put up on the board. Matter doesn't matter. <laughs> And we realize that it really doesn't matter. And we, realize, we begin to realize that every, nothing really matters because it's the ego that makes, offers everything meaning and offers, offers um, the, the matter. <laughs> it gives meaning to all the matter. And we realize that it, it really nothing matters. That all that really matters is that we're, are we open? Are we open? And, all, and, and in every moment, we're facing love or we're facing the dream. We're listening. And in that moment, if we're facing the dream, we're listening to the ego. We're listening to the self that we believed ourselves to be for a lifetime. We're listening to that old voice. We're listening to it just the blah, blah, blah. Because none of it really means anything. If we're <laughs> facing the dream and we're listening to the ego voice, it doesn't mean anything. There really is no meaning there, but it's... It, it, the only meaning is the meaning the ego self gives gives it. <laughs> it's the meaning that it offers. And there really is nothing um, that we can that we're ever receiving, but the ego self sees that it's grasping, that it's seeking, that it's finding, that it's searching, that it's taking, and that it's that it's holding all this sacred stuff. And we step back and we look through the eyes of love and we realise that we've never owned anything. <laughs> that we've never owned a thing, that we've never owned anything at all. We realize that it was just an imagination, that we're imagining everything. We begin to realize that all the, um, you know, this that wonderful lesson in our defenselessness, our safety lies, we begin to see that, that we've only been attacking ourselves. We've been, been attacking a seeming self, a seeming body that's out there because the ego eyes say that it's there. The ego eyes say that it's there in its imagination, the belief that it's there. And we take that step back and we look through the eyes of love and we realize how much we've been, the limitations that we've been offering on our own self, that we've been believing that we can possibly be separate from love. And we look on, on um, all the idols that the ego self has made up, all these idols that are worthy of being what they are, and, and all that these idols are is they're just separate from love, they're blocking out love. And we look at the dream, we turn to look at the dream, we're facing the dream, we're looking through the eyes of the ego, and we're blocking out love in that moment, and that's all that's really happening, nothing more than that. <laughs> we're just blocking out our truth, we're blocking out the truth of who we really are, and then we make that choice. That simple choice, we're a little willing, and we make that choice and we turn around <laughs> and we face love 
and we begin to form this beautiful relationship with, with, with love, with our truth, and we begin to get to know ourself, and we begin to realize that that wasn't ourself. That old self that we thought we were for a lifetime is not who we are, and we begin to see that, and begin to realize that we have been mistaken. And it does get as simple as that. I'm just going to read those couple of sentences here again.